Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's another beautiful day in paradise. How are you? Yeah. I hope you're well. Oh, that's my aerial on the trees again. They've opened up the uh, road through Preston, so I'm going to go that way today. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about the bloody give way sign, will you? No. All right. Dear me. Well, that was unusual, wasn't it? Don't normally start with a near fatal accident, do we? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, angry. Sunflowers on the left. Nice, aren't they? They don't uh, harvest them right up to the edge. So you always get to see a few sunflowers. They've done the middle of that field. Yeah, very nice. So, uh, back at work again. After my couple of weeks off. Got uh, payroll coming up at the end of the week. So that's good. Well, Saturday's now, I think. We'll have to do it Friday. Well, I think I've got enough money. My, basically, what I do is I... I'll just try and work out at the end of the month whether I've got enough money to pay the staff, which is most important, because you're not, you know, if you don't pay your staff, they won't come into work and, and that's your business finished, but pretty much. Whether you've got enough money to pay your rent, which is also extremely important and comes out automatically anyway, so, so actually not paying your rent is quite difficult. You'd have to either have an empty bank account and go overdrawn or uh, put a stop to the uh, standing order or whatever it is. And then third is uh, that was grass field. Third is um, suppliers, you know. Um, dental directory we use, they do it through a direct debit. So Again, you're, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to stop that going out. And then, uh, and it gets paid, you know, it gets deducted every month, so that we are never in a rears dental directory. And then uh, you've got the other, the, the labs, you know, which unfortunately tend to be last in the queue when things are really tight. You, you can usually, if you're on good terms with your lab, get a little bit of credit out of your lab. <coughs> Excuse me, especially in August. You can always just claim that you you're on holiday and takes you know got behind a bit. So and then and then very very last in the queue of course is you as the owner, the person who uh, has to pay themselves out of tax profits and then gets taxed on that what you pay yourself as income. So you will get double tax. I've never understood why. Uh, if you work for a firm, you shouldn't get your, your salary, your remuneration shouldn't be uh, tax allowable against tax. It just doesn't make any sense. So, the world is uh, breaking down slightly faster now, now that uh, Labour's got in with a insurmountable majority. We're starting to get all these um, policies coming out, which are you know, increasingly barking mad and unsupportable or insupportable, or whatever. Yeah. Like, for example, banning smoking. They, they want to ban smoking. Oh, I'm going to have to go around him, aren't I? Yeah. So, 
we've got an attitude in this country that everything's banned unless it's permitted. I've mentioned this before, in other countries it's the opposite. So everything is permitted unless it's specifically banned. But we've got an attitude. If you look at the some YouTube footage, if you look at the um, drone auditors, they go up and they start flying a drone about, and then and the, the pretty soon some red-faced individual in a uniform will come up and say, ask them if they've got a permit to do that, and they, it's banned. What they're doing is illegal and is banned unless they've got permission and they know they think that that's the end of it because they know by definition that the, nobody issues permission for that sort of thing so they won't have permission so they think that's the way to shoo them off whereas in fact uh, it is permitted you know subject to it oh dear me if I make it to work and upload this video or put it the other way around if you're looking at this video it means I have actually made it to work and not died in a flaming fireball. <coughs> yeah, so we, we've got this uh, ridiculous attitude in this country where we assume everything is banned unless you've got a permit, a piece of paper, permission. And uh, in other countries it's not like that. For example, in America, certainly in places like Texas and that, they're very permissive. You know, they're like, it's like live and let live as long as you're not robbing someone or hurting someone you're okay and uh, in San Francisco for example if you ride the trams I've got a white van right up my ass now I can't believe it what is wrong with drivers today is that is that a nuclear warning that I haven't picked up because I got the radio turned off or something so in San Francisco, they encourage you to ride on the trams because it's like it's a big tourist thing, blah, blah, blah. But these trams, they've got no outsides. They're like, you know, the seats face outwards. And uh, you can, you know, if you're just going up a couple of streets, you can just step on the running board and hold on to onto the, the vertical bar. And, you know, that nobody bats an eyelid when people do this. And yet in London, if you're... 10 yards away from your bus stop and the bus is stuck in traffic for half an hour, they won't let you off. You're literally a prisoner on the bus unless the bus driver decides to, you know, and you get to the point where you think, well, there's an emergency release on the door. I'm, if he, you know, if he keeps me any longer, I'm just going to pull the emergency release and let myself off. So, they we ban anything in this country. If we don't, if we don't do it ourselves, then we're quite happy for it to be banned. So, for example, a, boat, a bloke who collects classic cars will be quite happy to vote against having a local airfield. This van's going to go in a second. Here it he goes. He's going to go round the corner, which is a bit stupid because literally there is a there is a straight bit of road here. He could have gone along. Let me show you that. There's that straight bit of road there. He could have just overtaken on that straight bet and without possibly wiping out a family coming the other way around the bend. But judging by the amount of smoke that's coming out of that vehicle, I shouldn't imagine that they're, they're too bothered. That should be banned. That should be banned. <laughs> no. But you take my point that, you know, uh, the, the pilot, perhaps the pilot's actually fairly permissive, and so they're not that bothered if, um, you know, if there's a motor racing circuit, or people are like, uh, they're like, well, do I do that? Do I do that? If I don't do that, then it should be banned. Everything I don't do should be banned. And uh, instead of the opposite, which is everything anybody wants to do should be allowed, unless there's a very good reason for it to be banned. Come on. Oh, I can't stop now. So, the, the Labour government, we suspect, wants to just ban smoking. 
and they make this uh, <coughs> argument that um, <laughs> crap is coming out of that van. <laughs> I'm actually driving through it, and I'm uh, I'm 200 yards behind it. Um, so so they would like to ban smoking, and uh, they make the argument that you know it costs a lot of money, and it costs the NHS a lot of money, which it does. But then what they don't ever mention is that the Treasury makes a ton of money uh, because t the cigarettes are taxed to taxed to uh, very very highly. And uh, and also, you know, I mean, the idea of um, burning things because they're a burden to the NHS is interesting because, you know, I could argue that eating sweets is of no value at all and uh, is, uh, you know, costs hundreds of millions of pounds a year in, in running an NHS dental service. Not to mention that all the GAs on the kids and stuff like that. So, you know, where do you draw the line? I mean, I'm overweight. Should I be banned from the NHS? You know, you can ban everybody, can't you, from everything? Now, at the moment, they've banned smokers from most areas from which it is easy to ban smokers such as cinemas and airlines, pubs, stuff like that. But now, um, to ban even more people, even more pressure on smokers, they're gonna have to start banning them from areas which are traditionally regarded as public space. And that is um, outside, outdoor areas. So for example, you can not smoke in a pub, say, but you could smoke, uh, on the pavement outside the pub. Because the pavement is a public space. It's not owned by the pub. It's not part of the pub. It's nothing to do with the pub, uh, other than the fact that it provides public access to the pub. So they're gonna to have to start bringing in laws saying uh, certain activities are banned in, in public spaces. Um, now they don't have any trouble with that because you know, the world as a whole is getting more censorious and uh, less tolerant. He's still going that man. Look, I've caught up with him. So, you know, they've just brought in new laws which uh, pretty much uh, stop anybody protesting about anything and uh, including uh, thought crime to the extent that if you post, if you do a post uh, social, well, social media that isn't in accordance with the government's line on something, then you can literally be put in prison two or three years. And you know, those of us who follow this know that's a problem because for example, uh, look to America for two good examples. Before the last election, it was alleged that uh, Donald Trump was in collusion with the Russians. And a British ex-spy called Christopher Steele was commissioned by, I think, um, Hillary Clinton's campaign team to produce a dossier known as the Steele dossier detailing the uh, potential collusion between the Trump campaign and uh, Putin on the basis that uh, Trump and Putin had got along when Trump was previously uh, president and, um, and said that Putin was the sort of bloke he could do business with. Well, <clears throat> Clinton decided that that was a weakness uh, of, on Trump's part because she was looking back to the 50s when um, Senator McCarthy was accusing people all over the place of being communists and effectively sort of a sleeper, uh, a closet supporter of communism uh, during the Cold War. And so any, you know, link, you know, there was this question, are, are you now or are you ever, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And anybody who said yes could expect to be become a non-person. 
And she was rather hoping that if she could uh, stigmatise Trump in the same way, you know, by association with the Russian communist regime, that it would help her campaign and, and hinder his. Now, the only problem was that this dossier was entirely false. And uh, they had a massive great inquiry into it after after the election and found that uh, there, there was no there's nothing in this at all it was all it was completely fabricated and uh, the other thing was uh, Joe Biden's son the one who went to work for Burisma in Ukraine and got paid millions of pounds a year for a job that he had absolutely no qualification for um, and was being paid on the grounds that he was the son of the Vice President of the United States and therefore could, you know, carry favour with him. Ukraine, notoriously corrupt. I mean, fantastically corrupt. Really, they can't, they couldn't even fight their war without having to sack generals for corruption. <coughs> so Hunter Biden, it turned out, was a, a crackhead and owned uh, guns illegally and uh, spent all this bribe money on hookers and blow um, and made the mistake of leaving his laptop in a repair shop and forgetting to pick it up as you average crackhead does and uh, then uh, he then uh, became the property of the repair shop who then looked at what was on it and found it was basically a you know a, a complete blow-by-blow blow account of his including photos social media posts everything uh, video of him smoking crack cocaine everything was on there and again the media in America said basically that this laptop was fake that it had been created to uh, undermine Biden and, and Biden's son so but again, in, in the fullness of time, the FBI and the CIA had to come out and admit, no, in fact, the laptop did exist, that it had belonged to Hunter Biden, that it uh, did show what everyone has said it had showed before the election, but they managed to, but before the election, they denied it and been promoting the Russiagate thing. And after the election, they had to admit the Russiagate thing was a load of of uh, Cod's wallop and uh, and the laptop actually was real. So there's there's two things I'm trying to get to here. One is that um, I mean, obviously, you know, what I've talked about Finger regime before, and how the fact that as the money collapses, um, everything else collapses because everything relies on money. But also that the attempts by the public to uh, create good forms of money, sound forms of money, hard forms of money, like Bitcoin, are going to be subject to the most duress. You know, they're, they're already, they already have for years waged a campaign against Bitcoin, um, including deep banking, exchanges and uh, classifying it as a commodity instead of a currency etc etc all this all this what is reasonably annoying but somewhat low level opposition it's almost like trying to get your your child home and them just dragging their feet do you know what I mean they're like you're, 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 they're making it difficult, they're making it annoying for you, but you know that you're going to get them there at the end of the day. But now I think that they decided that, uh, you know, and anyone who understands Bitcoin knows it's an existential threat to central banks, governments, um, fiat currencies, etc. That was obvious right from the very, very early days when. Gavin Andresen went to talk to the CIA but it, you know it was a conceptual problem then 
Now it's turning into an actual problem. So they are, instead of holding their hands up and saying, well, okay, you know, we accept that there's not much we can do about this, they, they've decided, no, we're going to double down and, and really, really uh, introduce some draconian measures in, in an attempt to try and stop it or discourage it. Which I personally don't think will work because most people, a lot of people now know about Bitcoin and the advantages it brings and more and more people will, will understand that, you know, will realise that. There'll always be a bunch of people who, who don't really understand it, but that's fine. There'll be a bunch of people who drive cars who don't really understand what happens when they turn the key. <clears throat> and then the other thing is, uh, is basically security and privacy. And that uh, the, the having floated the idea of central bank digital currencies, which is just like digital uh, pounds and digital dollars and stuff, <coughs> which will give them <coughs> complete <coughs> insight into everybody's spending. And that having been roundly rejected <coughs> by by both the the public and the politicians who rely on them have now uh, decided to uh, get an insight into everybody's lives by insisting that they have a back door into every messaging program. And there's one holdout program uh, written, called Telegram, written by a guy called Pavel, Pavel Durov, I think. He's a Russian guy, <clears throat> got fed up with the Russians spying on his communications. So he implemented the uh, uh, encryption techniques released by, uh, invented by R Rivers Shamir and Edelman, the RSA, and then promulgated through the world by Phil Zimmerman. And, uh, and, and lost. You know, and and sort of where, where the government fought and lost in the United States in a in a period called the crypto wars, and then the the crypto escape worldwide. Now everybody can communicate without any insight uh, by the government, <clears throat> and but Durov uh, refused to give the government any access to any of the messages. They're encrypted on your phone, and they're decrypted on your recipient's phone and telegram they pass through telegram but telegram has got no way of physically reading them well the gov of course the government doesn't like that and they always they trot out the two things they always trot out which is terrorism and child pornography if ever you don't if ever you're accused of terrorism or child pornography then don't worry, it doesn't mean that you're a terrorist or a child pornographer. It just means the government doesn't like you. And that and nobody likes those two types of people. And so the minute you they say to everybody you're a terrorist or a child pornographer, you're gonna get zero support from anybody else. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. So those those are the two big guns they always wheel out. And they've said that, you know, terrorists and child pornographers are using Telegram. Well I mean Telegram so they also use, you know, they also have sugar in their tea. They also wear leather shoes and use the telephone. But I can't, um, <coughs> I can't see them arresting the uh, chief executives of any of these, of these uh, things. So, um, so he's been arrested in France and bailed for five million dollars, which is peanuts to him. But we're going to see a big government pushback, I think, on privacy and security, and our ability to um, trade with each other. It's getting real. The fight's getting real. And uh, most people don't really even understand that it started. But it's actually started in earnest now, with the arrest of Durov. And uh, and also other people, you know, like um, Ross Ulbricht and uh, in the States and 
Um, you know, Edward Snowden is exiled to Russia, and who else? Uh, another another Bitcoin guy that was arrested. But you know, well, or perhaps it has been going on more more than I thought for for longer than I thought. So, and I'm just sort of getting up to speed. But um, anyway, so nothing dental today. Not that nothing's been going on dentally. I mean, dentally, there's there's loads of stories to tell you. But the trouble is, you've got loads of stories of your own. I mean, so you're not going to be interested about my story about how some something happened in the surgery, and when and when you're um you're like, yeah, well. I can, I'll see you, I'll see you that, and I'll raise you as something else. But, um, anyway, uh, nice to talk to you, I'm at work now, I'm going to work, goodbye, goodbye.